Welcome to the machine learning at home. Today I will show you one of graphical methods related with one of the branches of machine learning. There are three different ways to do the machine learning. One of them is manifold learning, when we reduce dimensions of the data set. Second is a layout learning or clustering, where we find relations between individual observations. And the third one is a classic machine learning where we make the model, which allows us to predict something. So for the first type of machine learning, manifold learning or dimensional reduction, there are many different ways to show results. So one of the biggest problems of that field of machine learning is that we always receive the new set of variables. So suppose we have like a data set of 10 variables. Then after dimension reduction, after manifold learning, we will have probably a data set of two dimensions. But these dimensions are not the same as initial dimensions. And relations between our previous dimensions and new dimensions are a bit obscure. You need to understand it better. There are many numerical methods to understand it and some visual methods. One of this is a bplot. So let me show how bplot works. First of all, let us do some principal component analysis. So this is a method of dimension reduction or manifold learning. PRCOMP function we will use. We will use standard IS data without species variable and probably will add a scaling scale equal to true okay and now the very simple function is a b plot isp okay so please look on what you have so b plot is a plot, as name suggests, which show you something interesting. It show you two different sets of variables. So the red arrows, like sepal width, sepal length, petal width, petal length, names are a bit shortened because they don't fit well. So they are initial four variables in the Iris data set. And now PC1 and PC2 are two new variables. So this method shows you old variables and new variables together. Now PC1 and PC2, like these two orthogonal variables, so they have a straight angle between them, 90 degrees. So these variables, which are in red color, of course, they don't have a straight angle and they are good corresponding with new PC1, PC2, if they go in parallel to them. So, for example, look for petal lengths. This, the upmost arrow, is almost parallel to the PC1. So, we can say this variable is coherent with PC1. And if arrow is long, then there is a good, strong correlation between petal lengths and the PC1. So this bplot shows you correlations, good correlations, in case if arrow is parallel to one of new axes, and also if arrow is long enough, comparable at least to like one third of the size of the plot. So look now on a sepal width. This arrow goes down and slightly left. So what does it mean? So it means that mostly it is coherent with PC2. So we can even say the correlation with PC2 is good. But it also has some coherence with PC1 because it doesn't go straight down. It goes slightly left. So it goes left, so this is a negative correlation with PC1. So there is a slight negative correlation with PC1 and also kind of good correlation also negative by the way because it goes down with PC2. 
So as you see here, you can find plenty of information. If you simply look on new variables like PC1 and PC2 and old variables like sepal width, sepal length, petal width, petal length. You can also look on dots. So for example, you can see that some dots are going in a very separate way, like dot number 16, and goes into direction of sepal width. So we can guess that dot number 16 is different from many others exactly by sepal width. We can check it. And of course, don't forget that this arrows like virtually goes backward as well. So these are just parts of lines. So the whole sepal width line comes from this point and goes down, 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 down here. So you can also check the reverse part of each arrow, back part, which is not shown on the plot, but you can easily guess where does it stay. So these are plenty of information in a B plot. So you can understand a correlation between your new and old variables. And also you can see which points on your data go well with which old variable. This is also interesting. So many interesting information. And quite unfortunate that B plot is not very flexible. So for example, it's very hard to change the representation of B plot. And also it is not available for many other dimension reduction techniques, only for principal component analysis. So I made a little function, which is not a B plot in a strict sense, but it's a kind of B plot like visualization, which help you to understand exactly what I told you right now. So this is correlation between old variables and new variables, and also some interesting facts about the points, how they correspond with old and new variables themselves. So let me show how it works. So first of all, this is function which is present in my package, so you should load it. And then you can apply it to any kind of dimension reduction. For example, let us plot iris spin slightly different way. It's like we typically plotted. So we plot it and colorize dots by species. By the way, typical B plot doesn't allow it. Yeah, we plotted something different. We plotted loadings. So I forgot that we should extract X component of it. And also better is take two first principal component. So loadings, by the way, is very interesting plot. But I will not stop on it today. I will go forward. Okay, that's what I wanted. So these are actually our scores. So positions of our individual observations in a new space of PC1 and PC2. Okay, now we can go with my variance. So function name is B arrows. So B arrows will take as argument the first one. So I can simply repeat it. It's easier. B arrows. And also for the second argument, it should take the initial data. So it was iris without variable number 5. Okay. And look now what is going on. So this is a very similar picture. Almost identical, I would say. So sepal width goes the same down left direction. There are dots which are corresponding with it. Petal length and petal width are almost uh, identical and more or less parallel to the PC1. So this is B arrows. So the good plus of that function, it's much more flexible. You can make numbers of dots, you can make colors for species, you can change everything in that plot and it still work. So but what is very good about B arrows, it works to uh, many other dimension reduction methods. For example, it will work to the um, command scaling. So this method is available if you have distances. Let us calculate distances first. 
Iris D dist of Iris without variable number 5. And for diversity, I would prefer method equal to Manhattan today. Default is a Euclidean distance, triangle distance. Manhattan distance is, we can call it driving distance. So you can go like one way and then like way perpendicular with 90 degrees. It's like blocks in a city. You cannot just cross the block. You need to go on one street and then on the crossroad it should turn right to left. So this is a Manhattan distance. And then we apply method common scale. So is C we will call it CMD scale. Sometimes called principal coordinate analysis. But better name is a multi-dimensional scaling. Metric variant of multi-dimensional scaling. Okay, easy. And now we can visualize it. Very similar way, so we should plot it. And I think we should plot it just straightly. Okay. So a picture should be very similar to what we have in the principal component analysis. I would say even better is to make some dimensions names. So slab will be dimension one, just for aesthetical reasons. Y lab will be dimension two. That will look better. Okay. So now we apply this B arrows. So we simply say B arrows B arrows from is.c which is a metric multidimensional scaling of distances and now we should also tell what was our initial data Iris without variable number 5 so that's it that should work and let us see how. Okay, so look on it. Again, it's similar enough. There are some differences with the principal component analysis, so I think it will be good homework to understand what exactly differences are. And you can see that sepal width is also, as usual, going in the very opposite direction. And three other variables are more or less coherent with each other, especially petal length and petal width, which go along dimension number one. So sepal width will go along dimension number two plus slightly along dimension number one. So this is how B arrows look on multi-dimensional scaling plot. So B arrows is applicable almost to anything. And if you don't really understand how to uh, work with these arrows. You can even supply this plot with something else. For example, I want this plot to have additional arrows, which show me, just again, second time, my dimension 1 and dimension 2. Let us do it. So we simply use B arrows with double arguments. So B arrows iris C. It will calculate correlation of object with itself and then we'll label our arrows like dimension one dimension two and then we also shift them a bit so it's better to play them somewhere between minus three and minus three like probably here where my mouse cursor stays right now. Okay, so we have shift minus three, minus three. And then we colorize a bit. I want a different color. I want it black. Arrow color equal to one. One is typically black in R. I want dashed lines, LTI 
equal to 2 and I want color of text also black okay sounds like I did everything well so it looks long but I think it's understandable so we simply take the same data twice like correlation data with data then we label arrows like dimension 1 dimension 2 then we shift them slightly down and left and then we colorize them with black color and make dashed lines. Yeah, the one actually not txt but tx color. And now we have what I want. So I want to show you that dimensions are also arrows. So that's exactly what I tried to tell in the first time. So these are new variables, dim dimension 1 and dim dimension 2. And the green are old variables. So bplot is a way to show you new variables and old variables together. They slightly shifted just to make them more discernible. We can actually can combine them together and slightly scaled to fit within a plot. It's nothing else. So this is a bright, very bright way to visualize old and new variables if you do any dimensional reduction. So any way of dimensional reduction, whatever way you choose, will work with BRs. So this is it for today. So I tried to explain you BRs, a way to convert almost any dimension reduction plot into bplot. Again, bplot shows you old and new variables and relation between them and relation with original observations. Very many information together, very condensed plot. Thank you very much.